find that in our culture today that we we differ on orthodoxy within evangelicalism on what's orthodox and what's not oh because sure I, well but i mean there's i'm sorry but there's one more thing i want to add to that because today we're seeing the whole lbgtq thing and that wasn't addressed within the creeds how do you go about that uh, the the way the creeds have been interpreted over the years is that there's a um that there, there are there are implicit truths that flow from the the creed so you know for example when augustine and pelagius had their their battles uh over the nature of humanity and is humanity born in sin or is humanity born you know in in innocence and things like that um it, the 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 debates that they had um were it, it wasn't augustine didn't say well you know these creeds don't mention the stuff that Pelagius is talking about. So I guess, I guess there's no orthodoxy here. Like the, the, and the church councils didn't look at it that way either. When they condemned Pelagius and then later semi-Pelagianism, they, they weren't necessarily saying, oh, this is because it's explicitly spelled out in the creeds. The creeds don't cover every area of Christianity. They cover the, the basic foundation and the structure. And then um, uh, the confessions generally uh, come in and fill in the details, like the, the, the blueprint of a house. I, I do think that implied in the creeds is are some particular things. Like when we talk about God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and we talk about him being maker of it, that implies something about God's power. It implies the goodness of creation. Um, it implies, you know, the 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 goodness of being made male and female. Mm -hmm. So you wind up like you what you're just, you know, just steps away from understanding like how this actually um works out into uh, into, uh, um, uh, ethics. And so, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, this is another thing I think you've got to, we got to pay attention to even the way the Bible talks. Um, there are certain, there is a certain understanding that orthodoxy is connected to morality in a lot of ways. Like, I mean, the old, the new Testament talks about, um, obeying the gospel. Uh, Paul, when he's talking about the generosity of the Corinthians is it talks about obedient to their confession, you know, so you know, basically, proclaiming Christ as Lord implies um, uh, the 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 desire to submit and to obey uh, the the Lord's commands. So there there's a sense in which you could say, yeah, orthodoxy is what we believe, but then we can all just debate about what the Christian life looks like. Well, at some level, the Christian life is going to look different from culture to culture. But I think we got to be really careful not to mm. split the the orthodoxy from ethics because I just I just don't think you can do that. I mean, no one, I mean, child sacrifice is not in the creeds either. So mm -hmm. like, but does that mean that we, you know, we say, oh, we, I guess we can agree to disagree on that. Uh, no, I like there's, there's certain things there. There's certain ethical aspects of, of Christianity that are taught by Jesus and the apostles that, that I think we've got to, uh, um, to, 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 to keep closely identified with the creeds, especially those things that have been agreed everywhere, always by all.